Hello, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me today. My name's Robin Davis from momthemagnificent.com. And I have to start out by sharing that my daughter and I are both big Monster High fans. We even made Monster High Valentine's this year that she handed out. So that was a lot of fun. I am so happy to hear that. That's awesome. Yeah, we loved it. Um, so we're excited for the first complete season now out on DVD. Um, I have a question for you about this amazing fan base that you have. Why do you think Monster High resonates with so many people and you have such a large fan base? I think that fans really can see themselves represented in Monster High. One of the big things for us, obviously, is inclusion and diversity and identity. Mm -hmm. And we want everybody to see themselves on TV, on the screen, and being able to see themselves as kind of the hero of the story. So I think that's why fans really love Monster High, is we you know, are taking this very diverse group of kids and making them heroes that they're not always portrayed to be. Yeah, I love that. And I'm starting to see that as a mom of um, teens and then a preteen, the younger, the more we see this type of inclusion on TV um, and social media, the more I'm seeing as a parent, a more diverse group of friends. So I think that's really well replicated um, oh, for kids. Now mm -hmm. um, the design for this style of animation is so beautiful, fun and vibrant. Can you share a little bit about the animation style? Yeah, so as we got into the new generation of Monster High, we did take a lot of cues from the pre-existing Monster mm -hmm. High that was launched in 2010, but we wanted to be me even more expansive and really show a, di a diverse range of body types and types of monsters and really show on screen um, with the designs how different you can be and how awesome that those differences are. So our art department on the Nickelodeon show, as well as the doll design department have been consistently challenging themselves to bring even greater diversity across the board. And to, you know, while our characters are amazingly fashionable and are expressing themselves through their fashion, through their hair, through all these things that we love about the dolls, it really is about showing just this diverse array of beautiful characters, of amazingly, you know, cool characters and all the different ways there are of being cool. Yeah, and I love it. It's fun. My daughter likes to, you know, point out her favorite accessories on different characters <laughs> and whatnot. So it's a lot of fun and very um, pleasing to watch visually. And of course, the representation is just amazing, too. So I think you guys are yeah. nailing that for sure. Thank you so much. Do you have a favorite episode from the first season or maybe even a favorite moment from this first season? I think one of my favorite moments from the first season is in our earworm episode, which is a story where Torelai and her cousins, uh, Meality and Persephone, have formed this band called the Hisfit. And Torelai is, despite her very confident and proud persona, is actually pretty insecure. So instead of just letting her music speak for itself, she uses these kind of earworm devices to hypnotize the, her friends into liking her music. And one of my really, the, my favorite moment from the series is Torelai having this moment of this redemption moment. So, you know, she's been kind of portrayed up to this point as being villainous, being a little bit rude and not nice to everybody. And kind of the, the difference between her and the other characters is she's not always accepting of everybody. So um, this moment where she does realize that she has done something wrong and makes this apology and kind of, you know, has this big moment of making up for what she's done wrong has really always resonated with me. And I thought it was a really great moment. And I love the song in that episode. I think that's one of the best songs that we have. That's beautiful. And I really love that this series, um, takes you know real issues and real kid preteen problems that all the kids watching are dealing with now of course they're a little bit elevated and at a monster level you know with these fun potions and spells and stuff but at the heart of it it is real things that the kids can see themselves in on the screen for sure so speaking of these wonderful characters is there a monster you relate to the most and why Draculaura is the monster that I relate to the most because she she is 
we will say her strength is organization. <laughs> um, her strength is being in charge and being a leader. Uh, but her flaw on the opposite side of that is that she can definitely be a perfectionist. She can be a little bit too controlling. Um, and so I always feel like I'm learning the lessons alongside Draculaura when we have stories about her. Yeah, I think I can see myself in her too. <laughs> <laughs> What do you hope fans take away from this first season? Is there any certain lesson you hope viewers can learn? Our biggest lesson in season one really is that inclusion idea. We want people to see themselves represented on screen, see themselves, characters like themselves, being able to be the heroes of the story. Um, and we wanna see that they can also be you know, incredibly diverse and inclusive of those around them. So I think that's the biggest lesson of season one is accepting yourself and accepting others. Yes, I love that. And as a parent, that's very important. So thank you for making a fun series that both parents and kids can enjoy together and of course learn from too. I think that's really special nowadays. Thank you. Thank you. My last question for you is what can we expect next from our Monster High friends? Well, season two will be coming out in March on Nickelodeon, and we have a lot of incredible episodes. Uh, one of our, you know, big episode series, kind of our arcs from season two, will have our characters going on a vacation, which is going to be a fun. lot of fun. There's a lot of hijinks to be had at the hotel that they'll be visiting. Um, we also have a big arc with Claudine, where there's something very big that happens in the last episode of season one mm -hmm. that you can get on DVD now if you need to catch up on that, that she will be taking on the challenge of throughout season one and figuring out what that really means and what she wants from her life and how she'll pursue that. That's so exciting. I can't wait to watch this all unfold in season two. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me today. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Robin.